Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Today, talking about what was finally revealed to be question mark, question mark, question mark. The thing that they decided to keep away from the live stream and wait for a later day. We finally know what it is. And it's actually something cool. It's a Start Dash Guaranteed Summon that is currently NA exclusive. I'll be going over some of the units very quickly just to kind of say like, hey, there's not... <laughs> There's only you only have like 30 days to choose to whether or not you want to summon on it So I'll just very give a very quick look at the units and say as of where they are now and where what it looks like in two years Which ones are kind of worth getting and worth keeping or if it's even worth summoning on and that's gonna be today's video So let's go into it. So first of all, it's really cool that uh, question mark question mark question mark ended up being something that was actually legitimately cool um, I don't know why they waited until after Anniverse until you know there's a lot of questions to go on about that stream I'm still not 100% sure I think it would have been better if they had just kept it as a diary and just had a good happy fun time and then not said that there was anything coming for NA <laughs> I don't know maybe that's what I would have preferred I think I would have preferred it if they were a little bit more clear about like hey this is what's coming up don't expect anything too much and then when the day came here we go, now let's hear something. But anyway, enough about that. So this is the Start Dash Guaranteed Summon. Uh, what does that mean? It means that when they're, first of all, they're adding a new Start Dash Guaranteed Summon. I should just read it right here, which guarantees one limited time five, uh, five uh, star servant. Out of those who were added to the game during the main story part one, updated on August 15th, which is uh, when this was released. For new masters, the new feature will become available for 30 days upon clearing Singularity F, Flame Contaminated City, Fuyuki Section 3, Progress uh, Node 1. For masters who are already playing the game, the Start Dash Guaranteed Summon will become available for 30 days upon your first login after the new feature is added. I already summoned on this. I got Skahawk for MP3. Was pretty happy about it. So, but remember, it's only here for 30 days. So in that 30 day window, <laughs> You gotta decide whether or not you want to summon for it. The Start Dash Guaranteed Summon will disappear from its summon screen after you perform it or 30 days have passed, and you can check the time remaining until the Start Dash Guaranteed Summon disappears on the same quartz summon screen as shown below. Uh, an 11 summon with one limited time uh, 5 star servant guaranteed. 12 paid quartz, which is 3 quartz less than 15, which is usually the rate that it goes for. It's literally a steal at this point in for go terms uh, to summon on this. It's a really, really, really good value for what you're getting. Um, so one limited time SSR, one four star or above card and one three star above are guaranteed. So you can get a, you will get an SR from this, but it can be a servant or a craft essence. I got a, two craft essences for my times. So not the greatest, but it was okay. Um, yeah, and it has to be paid quartz. This is very, very, very clear. It has to be paid quartz. You cannot use the save. If you're free to play, you can't summon on this. That's just the way it goes on this one. I think they could have probably actually made it just not paid quartz, but because this also has to come to JP, you know, they're going to make them pay and stuff like that. It's, it's really weird. It's maybe the most... So here's the weird thing about Fago. There's not a lot of, like intrusive things to tell you to kind of summon for. I think this is actually maybe the first thing that with, with its 30 time, 30 day counter on it might be the first of its kind for Fago. We typically don't get stuff like this because usually Fago makes money because Fago makes money because the people in JP absolutely love the, the servants. Like they don't need to tell you like, hey, you summon on this great deal. You summon because the character you like is on there and then you go for it. And then if you wanna buy St. Quartz, that's great for them. Do they put any sales up? They sure don't. <laughs> they they do not. It is very different from every other gotcha in existence. Where And they also don't tell you from the front, like, hey, go summon on this, go do that, go do this. Uh, it's very weird. If you play any other gotcha or any other kind of like mobile game, you'll see what I'm saying. It's really weird. It, I didn't think it was weird until I actually sat down and thought about it. But yeah, Fago has a very weird way of doing it. I assume only because they make so much money that they don't have to care about that aspect so much. But maybe they... This is definitely in the first step of them maybe caring a little bit more about that stuff. Who knows if they'll ever get more deals like this in the in the future. Because like I said, 12 paid quartz for 11 summons is really, really good. Especially when 
it guarantees you an SSR at the end of it. Um, yeah, and then about the featured servants, the only five stars that will be featured are ones that came for part one of the game. In addition, the one guaranteed a five star servant, then certain SR and R, uh, as well as cash lessons, will be summonable. Limited time servants, servants of rarity four star or lower will not be summonable. So if you're looking for a limited four star, it's not going to be on here. I wonder if they include all four stars though. Maybe if you actually check on the menu itself, you'll see. But yeah, here are the units that are available for it. For the Saber class, we got uh, Nero Bride, we got Okita, um, we got Shiki. And then for Archers, we got Summer Saber, we got Gilgamesh, we got Ishtar. For Lancers, we got Brunhild, Skahawk, and Tamamo no Moe, which is Summer Tamamo. For Rider, it's just a Skandar. <laughs> For casters, you can get Ilya, you can get Da Vinci, you can get Merlin. For assassins, you can get Cleopatra, you can get Mysterious Heroine X, or you can get Shuden Doji. For Berserkers, you can get Raiko, or you can get Kentoki. And for rulers, you can get Shiro, and for Avenger, you can get Dantes or Jolter. And yeah, the, one of the 21 servants here, you can definitely get. So who are the units uh, that are actually good from here. It's actually a fair amount of them that I would consider good to usable in its own right. In terms of the best ones, it would probably be like, uh, Nero Bride, um, maybe I'm biased because my Summer Saber is MP5, but definitely all three archers are good archers and are good to have. Uh, Skahawk is a fantastic Lancer and I've heard a lot of good things about Tumbamo and my brother tells me after her buffs, Brynhild is very good. Uh, I'm a big fan of Iskandar. Uh, he's not very good in terms of writers, but I think his buffs, he eventually gets there. I have to double check on that, to be honest. Uh, I know currently in NA, he's not the greatest, but he might be getting more buffs. He might have gotten more buffs on JP that I'm just not aware of, so um, take take that with a grain of salt. If you know the actual answer, if you're someone on JP and you're a big fan of Iskandar like me, please tell me. I would love to know that in my future, this my boy gets better. But anyway, casters, obviously Merlin. It's Merlin. He's really good. <laughs> so I feel sorry because I really do like Da Vinci and I really do like Ilya, but come on. Merlin is the obvious go-to here. Uh, we have Cleo, Mysterious Heroine X, and Shuden Doji. I think Mysterious Heroine X ends up being good just because of the sheer mass number of strengthenings she's gotten over the years. So even if she's not the greatest, you still get a buttload of quartz from her if you get her. <laughs> so I would consider that a good. Uh, Mama Reiko is very good. Is Kentoki good? He deals a lot of damage. Um, but uh, my brother, who is a guaranteed 100% Kentoki lover, has told me that his skills are just not actually very good. Um, and he needs a buff of some kind. It's really weird because Kentoki does do a lot of damage. But his skills just need to be updated, and if he ever they ever do that, he'll be amazing. It's a really weird dichotomy, right? Of a unit who is just deals a buttload of damage, but all his skills last a single turn. And that's just not fair when you consider a lot of the more modern units that they've released. It's kind of like, hmm, maybe they're afraid of Kentucky breaking the game. Who knows? If they were afraid about a Berserker breaking the game, I got some bad news for them. It's already happened like seven times. Next, we've got Amakasu. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of him, but I've heard he's good from other people. He also has does have an MP that has a remove all, which is pretty nice. It's the only thing that can get past um, the the Castoria shield that she has. And for challenge quests, it would be very nice to remove deep buffs from people, as I've learned through the Neurofest. It's actually very clutch to have a unit like that, so I do think that in certain situations, he'd be insanely good. Dantes, uh, I, with his buff, he's insanely good now. He's a fantastic quick loops, uh, quick looper. I used him a whole bunch for Neurofest grinding, actually. And he did fantastic there, even at MP1, which a lot of people say makes it very difficult for him to loop, but I was having no issues. Uh, Jolter needs a couple buffs. I've heard, I've been consulted by a bunch of Jolter fans, and they've come to the consensus that even though she has the strong, the highest attack stat in the game currently, uh, which is fantastic in terms of attack, she just needs buffs of some kind. But she is extremely powerful, but it's another thing of like... You have the power, but maybe the skills are a little bit in the lacking department. They could use a little bit of help. 
And yeah, I know the 21 units, the big ones that most people would probably gravitate towards are Merlin, uh, Bride uh, Nero, because she can be used in a lot of team comps because of her support ability. Most infamously, Chen, Chen Gong farming. She can be used uh, very, very well for that, and I can also attest to how good she is at that. All three of these archers I would consider, like, a fantastic gets, and Mama Reiko would probably be the last one on my list here. If I was to do, like, a list of five that I would be pretty happy with, it would be either Merlin, Bride Nero, it would be Mama Reiko, it would be uh, Saber... Saber Summer, and then probably Ishtar right there. Actually, no, not Ishtar. I would probably go with Skahawk. I love Skahawk, and I love what she does. She She's won me a lot of challenge quests with her NP alone. But I think this uh, GSSR ends up being pretty worth the summon. I can't think of too many units in my head that I'm just like, that's kind of a miss. Even if they are a little bit on the worst side. Like I think actually Cleo is probably the weakest on here. But I like Cleo as a character, so I like having her for that reason. So I don't know, unless you super hate Cleo, you should probably not summon on this. There's no point in me saying this, because all the people who can summon in a GSSR have already summoned on the GSSR, so feel free to tell me what you got on that in that instance. Um, it's really weird. GSSRs are super hype in Fago because it's very hard to pull an SSR in general, and especially for limited units. And especially with the pool, how big it is now, it's become only harder. The fact that this is a pool of 21 units is pretty nice for a start dash campaign for new players. I think it's pretty solid to pick from here because if you're a new player, chances are if you get any of these units you're going to be pretty solid i think shiki might be the only one where you might have a little bit of difficulty shiki and <laughs> cleo might give you a little bit of issues actually trying to go for the game but if you get lucky and get merlin then you'll be able to like coast by a lot of the early uh, early stuff with him and like a vich friend to make up for the fact that he doesn't get 50 percent charge but you can also just use another merlin or hell, you can use any of the other Buster supports that they've released if you just randomly have them on here. So yeah, this is a cool addition, and it's Enic exclusive for now. It's obviously going to be going to the JP version of the game, because it would be selfish for us to keep a GSSR to ourselves when it's related to a start dash guaranteed summon. That should go to JP as well, and uh, they will likely get it whenever they have... Um, the next big event based around start dash is when i assume they'll get it and it will likely look exactly the same so if you're a jp player this is a weird thing to say but if you're a jp player this is going to be coming to you i think i would say relatively pretty soon maybe in like a month or two depending on the feedback that we've got they get from the jp users of the game because uh for certain that's the bigger <laughs> fan base and they are going to hear about this because some of them play this <laughs> so they'll hear there's a GSSR on NA and go, huh? A, when's that coming for us? <laughs> and they'll be getting it, I think, next Start Dash that they have one, which will probably be for a download celebration, maybe? We'll see. But yeah, this is really cool. I like stuff like this. I hope that they continue to do more like this. I hope that the stream didn't put them off from sharing information. Because I think that the way that they actually shared this, which was in a two minute video, was really good. I think they just need to get better with their timing. Like, hey, doing this during a time of when, like, most JP players are busy grinding in the summer and NA is not really doing anything, and this is for a back-to-school event before summer, and a lot of people are like, ho-hum, I have to wait for summer. Great time to announce this and have a sh really quick video explaining it. In the middle of... The JP anniversary stream where you say coming soon? No. Very bad. <laughs> Very bad idea. So just learn from your mistakes in the past and kind of keep going forward. And hopefully we get more stuff like this. I think based off of the end of the video, they said like, hey, we have some more stuff coming. I believe there's a stream um, that will likely show summer stuff that will be happening during the back to school event. So I'll see if there's anything cool added there. But in general, stuff like this is really cool to add. And... Yeah, hopefully um, more stuff like this comes in the future and JP players will be able to summon on their GSSR and get who they want. And yeah, that's the end of it. In turn, if you're going to ask me, hey, should I spend real money on this? I'm someone who never spends money. Um, my reply to that is that you need to look at your own financial situation and see if it is feasible for you. 
if it is feasible for you and it is safe for you to do so, I say, why not? But if you're someone who's like, yeah, I'm eating every single dollar counts, no, don't don't summon on this. For your own well-being, don't summon on this. It's it's fine. You don't have to do it. Um, and you don't don't feel pressured to do it either. I know it's really weird after I've asked a whole bunch of people, hey, how you do it, but that's just the, the nature of these kind of games. And in general, if you're someone holding off, continue holding off. I think it's fair to stay pure the way that you are, especially on NA where it's easier to stay that way. But yeah, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to tell me how you feel about this. I saw that some people were a little bit disappointed that the question mark, question mark, question mark, all it ended up being was a GSSR. Um, and a paid GSSR at that. Like, hey, that's really cool for the people who have the money to give you but what about the people who don't all they get is people watching other people get ssrs <laughs> it's not very fair so i would like to hear any opinions you have about that i think that they could have very easily have just made this 30 quarts and made it so it was in general same quarts all around and i would have been like that's insane that's great but you know typically speaking they don't really like to do too many free GSSRs. It's their kind of... This isn't even free. They don't like to do too many, like, non-paid. I don't think they've ever done in the history of the game a non-paid GSSR. So, it kind of had to always be paid. But anyway, that's it for the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Best of luck if you do end up summoning, and hopefully you get someone that you want. I think there's a lot of good options here. So, a lot of fun units as well. Uh... And a lot of fan favorites on here. I think it's just a good mix of 21 dudes in general. And that's it for the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.